Hi there everybody, Professor Tomney here with another Chem Complete Lecture, and in today's lesson we are going to dive into carboxylic acid derivatives, which include a handful of different functional groups that derive from or have very close similarity to carboxylic acids. And then after we've defined those, we're going to take a look at the first one, which is known as the acyl chloride and the different reactions that the acyl chloride can undergo. So that's all coming up on the channel right now. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining me today and using Chem Complete as your source of organic chemistry knowledge. Just a general reminder to head over to chemcomplete.com. You can check out all the free resources that I offer over there, and it's a great way to help support the channel. So let's go ahead and get started with this carboxylic acid derivatives. So if you were in tune with the last series where we were talking about carboxylic acids in general, you know a carboxylic acid has the general form. Uh, in fact, I don't even want to do that. Let's just do R because I'm making a specific one with acetic acid there. Okay, so R, C double bond O, and then an OH group, right? So the biggest thing basically being that we've got this carbonyl group and then coming off of here, we've got something that's more electronegative than carbon, be it a oxygen group, right? A nitrogen group, but this is where the derivative part is going to come in. You're going to see this general format, okay? So we know that aldehydes and ketones were their own separate set, and that is because the aldehydes and the ketones don't have that electronegative group over there. They have a hydrogen or another R group, and so they're going to behave quite differently than a lot of these derivatives are that we kind of group or mesh together here. Okay, so here are the derivatives, the acyl chlorides, the anhydrides, the esters, and the amides. Those are the main derivatives that we get from carboxylic acids. So an acyl chloride is going to be the generalized structure, and we are going to have a chlorine group. Now, you could really talk about this just as general acyl halides. However, the bromine and the iodine are so reactive that they generally are not going to effectively be used or shelf stable for any period of time. Acyl chlorides are still highly reactive, but you can kind of at least preserve them somewhat long term. Um, so this is primarily the grouping that we get here, even though technically halides in place of this, meaning bromine or iodine, would also work. The main key here being that you've got an electronegative group right here, and that electronegative group is going to also make a great leaving group for other things to come in, okay? So anhydrides would be the next grouping. So this will have the general format R, C, double bond, O. And now this one is going to have another carbonyl group. It's actually going to be an O, another C, double bond, O, and then it will have an R group on the other side here. So this whole chunk right here is going to be the derivative portion that will leave in reactions. And that's actually a pretty decent leaving group because the base is going to be resonance stabilized, right? So if I look at the leaving portion of an anhydride, I'm going to get a resonance stabilized portion that's hanging out in solution here where we could completely switch this. And then one of the pairs that I would find on here could go down to form the double bond, right? So that makes a good leaving group. Then I've got esters. Esters are going to be R, C, double bond, O, and then it's going to be an O group and another R group on the other side of that. And then finally, we've got amides. Amides, which derive from amines, it's going to be C, double bond, O, and then we're going to have some sort of an N group here. So it could be an NH2, okay? Or it could be some sort of an N group that then also has an R group there. So maybe an NH, right? That's also got an R group attached. Different varieties uh, as far as the amides are concerned, but those are the general groups. Now I want to point out something else that's very important here, which is that when you look at this, there is a general trend for reactivity where if you're taking a look here, okay, this is going to be high reactivity. So acyl chlorides are going to be the most reactive reactivity. And then at the bottom of the list is going to be the lowest of the group as far as reactivity. So down here, the amides, that's going to be the low end of reactivity. So acyl chlorides will be the most reactive and hydrides will be the next, then esters, then amides. When we are taking a look at this, 
everything that is higher on the list can be turned into something lower on the list but not vice versa. So in other words, acyl chlorides can be turned into anhydrides, esters, and amides. Anhydrides can be turned into esters and amides. Esters can be turned into amides, and so on. Okay, now generally, if you have a group and you want to turn it into an amide, you would pick an acyl chloride instead of an ester simply because acyl chlorides are more reactive. It's going to be a more efficient reaction. It's going to save you more time. The conditions won't be as uh, intense as far as heating or other things of that nature. So just keep some practicality in mind. Just because you can turn an ester into an amide, it might be more effective to get an acid chloride and turn that into an amide if there is any potential for that or you could potentially do that. Okay, so there is still sort of the practical lab aspect of it. But this is the general order of the reactivity for the derivatives. So the next thing we're going to take a look at then is the acyl chloride reactions. Okay, so for acyl chloride reactions, let's just generally outline what's going to be happening here mechanistically, and then we can go through and actually talk about the individual reactions. So for acyl chlorides, you're going to have an RC double bond O, and then you'll have the Cl on the other side. Now when you've got this set up here, you're going to usually expose the acyl chloride to something that is nucleophilic. So we're just going to use our standardized nucleophile here and write the word nuke for the time being. However, it will be more specific when we start talking about the individual reactions. So what's going to occur here is that the nucleophile will come in to this partially positive carbon and we can expect between the oxygen and the chlorine which are both highly electronegative that this carbon is ready to go as far as accepting nucleophiles it is very partially positive it's looking for electrons it needs something to come in so when we get to that point you would go down into the tetrahedral intermediate state now of course we can't have a carbon with five bonds so this pi electron set needs to move up to the oxygen to create a lone pair here so when we do that we're going to get r c now this is going to be o minus when we get to this stage and then we would have nucleophile that's attached itself and then we have the chlorine okay now at this point for this intermediate, chlorine is an excellent leaving group along with all the other halogens, but again, they might be a little too reactive for acyl chloride uh, type of compounds. So the chlorine is going to leave and we're going to reform the pi bond when that happens. And then as a result, what we can end up with is we've got that RC double bond O functionality and then whatever we added as the nucleophile, right? So it's our choice. So you can see that's why it's kind of easy to make anything else on the list because all I have to do is find some reagent that can potentially act as a nucleophile in that case kick the chlorine off and then I've got whatever I want my amide my ester and so on okay so then let's take a look we're going to kind of make like a flow chart or not even a flow chart like a branching chart of everything that the acyl chloride can react with or undergo okay so here's the acyl chloride and for the acyl chloride we can do the following so if you would like to turn the acyl chloride back into a carboxylic acid that is possible and you can do that using water so this is one of the reasons you have to be very careful as far as the stability and the shelf life of this reagent because if moisture gets around in any capacity it's going to completely ruin the reagent and react with it so you can expect that in return you would end up with your carboxylic acid okay in a similar manner we could also have an alcohol instead of h2o so we could have some sort of roh group okay and what i would end up with is r c double bond o and then the chlorine would leave and when that alcohol comes in okay the first alcohol would come in with its protonated form then a second equivalence of alcohol would need to remove that proton and become slightly acidic uh, but what we would end up with here is that you would end up with the OR portionality that is associated with whatever your alcohol OR group is, right? So you've got that. Okay, now uh, thinking along the amide terms, we could also turn around and we could put, now I'm going to do NH3 here, but you could also use some sort of an uh, NH2, CH3, right? Actually, the way I want to write that, let's back that up. So we could write something like this, in other words, okay, NH2. 
And so in that case, uh, the one with the NH3, right, would give me the C double bond O, and then it would give me an NH2 in return. Same premise as with the alcohol. The NH3 would come in first. That NH3 group would have a formal charge, a positive formal charge, and then another NH3 group would come in to remove that extra proton and make it the NH2. Okay, now if it were to be this case right here, I would end up with R, C double bond O, and then I would have C, uh, excuse me, no, I would have N, H, and then I would have the CH3. Okay, so different types of amides that we can make. You can also make an anhydride out of this. So if we were to use the uh, carboxylate type of ion, we can couple that with the uh, acyl chloride in order to make an anhydride. Okay, so something of that nature would end up looking like this. Maybe we've got uh, a sodium salt of the acetate ion, right? Uh, this does not have to be CH3. You can just put R there, but I'm giving a specific example here. Okay, so this whole group then, because this is minus and this is plus, so here's your nucleophilic part, you would end up with the anhydride. So this RC double bond O to start with is coming from the acyl chloride, and then I would have the O, C double bond O, and in this case it's a CH3, right, that we ended up with there. Okay, now another one, that tends to be overlooked a little bit more is you can use the Gilman reagent. So we actually talked about this in the aldehyde and ketone chapters or lecture series when we were discussing how to make ketones because that's one of the things you can use. So you can use an acyl chloride and if you use your Gilman reagent which is going to be some R group, uh, very commonly the example shown uses CH3 but it can be an R group of any uh, liking that you have and you're going to need two of those okay and then it's copper lithium so if you utilize that reagent it is going to deliver one of those two r groups in place of the chlorine and so what i would expect then is i'm going to have r c double bond o now that first portion comes from the acyl chloride and then i would have another r group right so i can easily make a ketone out of this even though the ketone is not a carboxylic acid derivative like a bunch of the others were this is still a valid way to make ketones and it's something that the acyl chloride can be used for okay um, i'm running out of space on the flow here but we can also still use this for grignard reagents so a grignard could undergo a reaction with the uh, acyl chloride the grignard is going to react twice because the first time the Grignard reacts, it would make a ketone, and then the second time ketones are still reactive with Grignard reagents, the second time you would end up getting your actual uh, H3O plus in the second step and creating the alcohol. So I can go over that just for a second so people can see what we're talking about here. Okay, so I've got R, that R group, C double bond O, and then I've got CL. Okay, I expose that to, let's just say, um, methyl magnesium bromide right and then that's step one step two would be the acid workup so what's going to happen in this case is that the ch3 group is going to come in to the carbonyl attack and it's going to open this up so i get my first grignard addition i get this tetrahedral state and then the chlorine is going to leave just like it does in the other type of derivative reactions, right? So I've got a CH3 here that came from my Grignard. This will leave, and then this will come back down. So what do I get? I get a ketone. So you might think initially, oh, this is just like the Gilman reagent. I get a ketone. Well, the Gilman reagent is not nearly as aggressive as a Grignard reagent is. And so when I get this, this ketone, if it is in the presence of Grignard, and there would still be Grignard present, right? it's going to react again. So I would expect another CH3 MGBR to come in and do a second Grignard reaction with the ketone, where this will come in here, this will come in here. And then as a result, I'm gonna get R, I would now have a CH3, I would have the other CH3 from the, whoops, from the first time that the Grignard occurred. And then I've got the O minus. So now I use my H3O plus or my H2O, whatever you're working up with. 
right? And now the acidic proton can be utilized to create the alcohol that we all know from the Grignard reaction as a result. So you come, grab the proton, release that to water, and what you end up with is R C double bond O that came from the acyl chloride. Actually, excuse me, not C double bond O, C O H, right? And then C H three, C H three. Throwing out C double bond O there, I'm still too involved in the derivative mode. Okay, so that covers carboxylic acid derivatives and their reactivity, as well as the general reactions that acyl chlorides would undergo. So again, one more shout out, chemcomplete.com. Go over there, check it out. We've got very affordable guides for sale. A couple bucks, five bucks, ten bucks for some of the heftier guides that will help get you through your coursework. It's a great way to support the channel. Like, comment, subscribe. I love all you guys, and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you so much for learning with me. Thank you.